I'll review the A12 9800. Let's do it. Uh, first, though, how do I let you guys down gently? Uh... Hmm, okay. Well, first, here's some quick background information about the A12 9800 and this new series of APUs from AMD for those of you who aren't yet up to speed. AMD released Ryzen earlier this year, which I'm sure you are aware of, and it's been happy times for enthusiasts ever since. Budget shoppers recently received the quad-core Ryzen 3 models, but those who are on a truly tight budget, they're still hanging out for those APUs, which integrate both the CPU and GPU under the one roof. This first wave of AMD APUs on the AM4 platform have been given the codename Bristol Ridge, but they aren't what many believe them to be, or at least hope they'll be. In short, these aren't Zen-based APUs, and those probably won't arrive till sometime next year. What we have here are excavator-based CPU cores, in other words, a refined bulldozer architecture, and I am using the word refined quite loosely here. The A12 9800, for example, sports four excavator cores, along with a generically named 512-stream processor-enabled Radeon R7 GPU. The Bristol Ridge series was released as OEM products late last year, but have recently become available on the retail market, and this has caused a good many of you to get very excited. The A12 9800 now costs $110 US and promises pretty decent integrated graphics performance, and the best part being that you can take advantage of it on the new AM4 motherboards, such as those sporting a b350 chipset there's also a much cheaper and equally popular version without the integrated gpu called the athlon x4 950 and at 60 dollars us people have already started snapping them up however the less impulsive buyers among you have been desperately asking me to check these new am4 parts out to see if they're any good so let's do exactly that right now okay so right off the bat let's get this out of the way for now, the Bristol Ridge range only supports up to DDR4-2400 memory, and right now there is simply no way to set the memory speed any higher, at least on all the motherboards I tried. Memory performance was always a big issue for the bulldozer architecture, and after numerous revisions, it's still rather pathetic compared to the Intel competition. Here we see the G4560 pushing more than twice the bandwidth of the A12-9800. Also, keep in mind this APU also has to feed an integrated GPU with a measly 11.2 gigabyte bytes of bandwidth, it's pretty tragic stuff. Next up we have Cinebench R15, which is a good synthetic benchmark for gauging how powerful a CPU single and multi-threaded performance really is. As you can see, the dual-core Pentium G4560 has no trouble hosing the A12900 in both the single and multi-threaded tests, and it's clocked quite a bit lower as well. Yep, this is all looking very familiar, uh, very bulldozer-ish so far to me. PC Mark 10 throws a number of common productivity workloads at the system, and here we can see the individual scores for the writing and spreadsheets tests. Even these basic tasks present a real challenge for the quad-core APU. Don't even bother with content creation, here the A12-9800 was outscored by the G4560 by a massive 64% margin. Dual cores rule and old excavator core based CPUs drool, that's the saying isn't it? Moving on, we tried out the Monte Carlo simulation workload, and here the APU keeps us waiting for almost 16 seconds, again 64% longer than the G4560. So you want to do some encoding on a budget? Well then get the Ryzen 3 1200 because it was 150% faster for the same price. You'll need a cheap GPU with the Ryzen 3 processor, but that shouldn't be an issue for more than twice the CPU firepower. The A12900 also took 46% longer than the G4560 in the Corona benchmark and 52% longer than the R3 1200. The blender results aren't actually that bad. Here the A12900 did beat out the G4560, though it has to be said, the G4560 does put on a very poor showing in this test. The APU was still 46% slower than the Ryzen 3 1200. Now we have the Premiere Pro CC results, and if you're buying the A12900 for a cheap video editing rig, well, I hope you're only making minute-long skits, 
because our one minute and 30 second video took roughly 13 minutes to render. Now for some game tests using an extreme high and discrete graphics card before we run a few integrated GPU tests. Now before you lose your mind that we're using a $110 CPU with a $1000 GPU, just take a breath and relax. This just gives us an idea of what the CPU side of things can deliver when uncapped before we get to the budget stuff. So with the brakes off, the A12900 was good for just 40 FPS in this real-time strategy title and was 18% sold in the G4560 in this very CPU-intensive game. Moreover, it was 30% slower than the Ryzen 3 1200. Things look much worse this time in Battlefield 1, and these are important results to note even with the Pascal-based Titan GPU. What this means is, regardless of the graphics card you use, it's not possible for the A12900 to average more than 50 FPS and will often dip into the low 40s. You guys often ask me how it's possible that consoles with their many Jaguar cores are so much slower than budget CPUs like the Pentium G4560. Well, this is your answer. Finally, we have Hitman, and here's another title that shows us that no matter what kind of GPU firepower you bring to the table, the A12900 isn't going to allow for anywhere near 60 FPS on average. Now, just finally, before we get to the integrated GPU gaming stuff, here we have the full power consumption figures for the fully configured systems. That right there shows us just how much of a truly massive step forward AMD made with the Zen architecture. Here we see that the A12900 consumes almost as much power as the 6-core 12-thread Ryzen 5 1600 in the Excel test, and we're not even stressing the GPU here. The figures look much the same in the Cinebench R15 multi-threaded benchmark as well. The total system consumption was 121% higher than that of the Pentium G4560, and we often saw quite a lot less performance. Alright, so here's a test the A12900 can win against the Pentium G4560, testing integrated graphics. Intel's integrated HD graphics is still a complete joke for the most part, especially on their more affordable CPUs. The G4560 is basically okay for Windows applications, but is just pretty much next to useless for any kind of serious 3D rendering task. Here it averages just 14 FPS on Overwatch, while the A12900 manages a much more respectable 43 FPS. That said, using the lowest possible in-game quality settings at 1080p, the quad-core APU didn't exactly deliver a smooth experience, with regular dips below 30 FPS. Installing the $70 GeForce GT 1030 improved performance on both CPUs dramatically, though the G4560 did deliver a better overall experience and it was noticeably smoother. The A12900's integrated GPU does quite well in Rocket League, and with the game using very little CPU power, the APU does do quite well here. The G4560 using the Intel HD graphics is still a pile of snot, though with the GeForce GT 1030 it does do very well. Finally, I decided to check out CSGO, and here the G4560 actually did manage to average 48 FPS using the Intel HD graphics, though overall the experience was still pretty horrible. For novice players, the A12900 wasn't too bad, though even with a discrete GPU, we still hit the same 45 FPS 1% low. The G4560 proved to be a beast with the GT1030 installed and never dipped below 100 FPS. Right, so at this point, you can probably tell I'm not at all impressed with the A12900, and really, I strongly recommend you avoid purchasing any of the Bristol Ridge CPUs. I thought long and hard about this, and I can't really think of one valid situation where these CPUs make an ounce of sense. Now, you wouldn't buy any of these CPUs merely as a placeholder, so you can get a Zen-based APU or maybe a Ryzen 3 CPU down the track. That makes about as much sense as buying a KB Lake X CPU as a tie-over for one of the 6-core, 8-core, or bigger Skylake X CPUs. And then, of course, there is the Athlon X4950, and that is very cheap at $60, I'll admit, but it really delivers the exact same performance as what we just saw out of this chip with a discrete GPU. The G4560, on the other hand, well, that can be had for about $80 US at the moment, and it's really worlds better in every single way compared to the Athlon chip. Basically, in order to use the Athlon X4950 or the A12900, you need to buy a new AM4 motherboard, and with that, some new DDR4 memory. Say you do go with an ultra-cheap A320 board for $50, 8GB of DDR4 for $70, that means the A12900 upgrade package will set you back $230. Meanwhile, the same memory and motherboard combo with a Ryzen 3 1200 CPU plus the GeForce GT 1030 will cost you $300. So that's only a 30% increase in price for over twice the CPU power and twice the GPU power. 
Meanwhile, if you opt for the Athlon X4 950 and the GT 1030 combo instead, well, that's even worse, as the Ryzen 3 1200 with the same discrete graphics card costs just 20% more. I haven't touched overclocking here, and frankly, I'm not even going to bother. Even if you could push the A12900 to something insane like, say, 5.5 GHz, it'd still pretty much just suck. Of course, it can't actually operate at that frequency when overclocked. I have heard of people getting it up to about 4.8 GHz, and at that frequency, it still struggles to keep pace with the G4560 while drawing something like three times more power. Faster memory would no doubt help, assuming the memory controller can handle it, but even with DDR4-4000 memory, for example, it isn't going to save the Bristol Ridge CPUs. As we saw with the same DDR4-2400 memory as the G4560, we saw less than half the available bandwidth. There really is no saving grace here in my opinion. I mean, AMD's intention was obviously to feed the OEM channels with these rubbish chips and get rid of them. And it seems now they're just trying to buy a bit of time before the Zen-based APUs arrive next year. And they're probably trying to push these on the back of the success that Ryzen's had. Uh, but in my opinion, they've really just tainted the AM4 platform with an architecture we'd all just like to forget. And I would have thought AMD pretty much felt the same way. Anyway, my advice is simple. Just don't buy these chips. They're really just garbage. And I know that sounds harsh, but well, that's my honest opinion. So wait for the real deal, as I do expect the Zen-based APUs to really be something quite special, and they will no doubt give Intel quite a few headaches. That's going to do it for this one. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time, guys.